Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this evening's meditation is the epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this week is a pretty big week in the sports world. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Tomorrow is the Super Bowl where the two best teams of this NFL season will go head-to-head. The Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots will battle it out to see who will become the champion of football this year. And there will be millions of people who will tune in to watch the game, or at least the commercials during breaks, and see who's crowned the champion. Do you know it's not the only big sporting thing taking place this week? No, there's another big sporting event on Friday when the Winter Olympics opening ceremony will take place. An event that only takes place every four years for the Olympic, the Winter Olympics, but every two when you think of the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics alternating between the four years. And the sports world will see over 2,900 athletes, some of the best athletes around the world in winter games competing against each other so that they may have the chance to win 259 gold medals. And people will tune in and watch these athletes compete. I bring that up because that's what Paul does in our text. Specifically, beginning in verse 24, Paul draws our attention to people who run in a race, athletes who run in a race, and what Paul is encouraging us today is to compete like an athlete, like one who runs. And Paul is encouraging us to run in such a way that we win the prize. Athletes that run a race, they win a perishable prize, a crown, a trophy, a ring. Christians get that imperishable prize of life in God's kingdom. And Paul is encouraging us to compete like an athlete. Now, I bring up the Olympics because that's what Paul's referring to in our text. Now, the Olympics as we know them weren't really started officially until the year 1896. But in Corinth, the people to the city where Paul is writing this letter, his first letter to the people in Corinth, they had their own games. They were called the Ishmaelian Games. And they took place every two years, ten miles from the town of Corinth. Paul knew that the people of Corinth understood what an athlete was and how a runner must must go into training to be successful in the competition, in the stadium, to run the race, to win the prize. And as the people of Corinth would have in mind those games that took place every two years, so he says to the Christian, compete like an athlete. Go into training like an athlete. Face those obstacles with the determination of an athlete who's running to obtain the prize and run in a way to obtain the prize. So how's your running going? How are you doing as you battle against the competition that rages war against you? What's that competition? Well, in the sports world, it's easy to see the competition. It's whatever team is on the schedule. 
in the sports world, it's not just the teams that are on the schedule, but it's for that championship game. And so often players at the very beginning of the season, maybe even in the preseason, set their focus on that championship game. Maybe put a picture of that trophy. And they work hard to obtain that trophy. And they discipline their bodies in the diet, in the exercise, in the strength training regimens that happen every day. The sacrifices that they make so that their bodies may be ready to compete. Uh, That's what Paul's talking about. Look at verse 25 of our text. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. You know, as you watch these championship games, or as you watch the Olympics that'll take place, so often the the television programmers will have reporters go out and interview those athletes to get a picture of who they are, uh, their background, their life, and also focus in on the number of hours they've practiced the dedication and the passion they have to be the best they can be in their sport, the sacrifices they've made personally and the discipline and the relationships with family and friends, the time apart so they can train to win. They are self-controlled in all things. That's what Paul is calling us to be today as Christians. Self-controlled in our training. What are we training against? Who are we competing against? Scripture names three things that give Christians competition. Our sinful flesh, Satan, and the last enemy to be defeated is death. Now, you're all here, which means we have not faced that third enemy of death. But we know we will. And like that championship game that looms in the distance, we know that third enemy is coming. And so we prepare. We go into training, and yet this training, this preparation isn't just pointing to that last championship game of death. No, there's still two enemies we battle against until that day when our Lord calls us home. We take on that first one, sin. You know that sin. You know how that sin infects your life and your desires and and that attitude that really just doesn't want to get up some days from the couch and move our bodies for exercise. You know that sin? We know it physically, don't we? The do- doctor calls us to be active in, in watching our diet and getting exercise every day. And sometimes we just don't do that, do we? What about with our faith? We know athletes going to training every day. We marvel at the discipline to get up and exercise every day, at their discipline to watch their diet. But when we consider our faith, it's not about the activity and movement of our bodies. It's not about feeding our stomachs. No, it's about feeding our faith with God's word. We go into training for righteousness. We go into training as we dive into God's word every day. In personal devotions. Diving into God's word in Bible study. In worship. And as we consider that kind of training... We also know the battle of sin that rages inside of us. 
of how easy we can be led astray to do something else, rather to, to be in worship or to read Scripture or to spend time in Bible study with brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, our sinful desires would rather do something else that's, that's more immediately pleasing and satisfying. And we learn in this text that our lives aren't always as disciplined as an athlete's. We don't always train as we should, as we face the competition, that enemy of sin that even reigns inside our hearts and lives and sinful desires. And yet that's not the only enemy the only competition we face. No, we also face Satan and his demons. In fact, Scripture talks about it this way in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, he says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our battle as a Christian isn't just against the sinful things of this world and our flesh, it's against the spiritual forces at work to put stumbling blocks in our ways, to discourage us, to lead us astray, to make life in this world hard for the child of God. You know, for an athlete, for those football players that are participating in the Super Bowl tomorrow, they know when that game's going to take place. Tomorrow, in the evening, Minneapolis, Minnesota. But when's your battle taking place? When's the next time that Satan is going to attack you with his temptations and his demons are going to encircle you and we seem to be on edge all the time? We don't know when that championship temptation will take place. No, those battles take place every day, don't they? Constantly it seems like, maybe even here in worship. As Satan draws our thoughts, our minds, somewhere else. As maybe even here in worship in the evening, it's been a long day, you're sitting still, you're listening to a guy talk, and it's so easy to relax and difficult to stay awake. And we know the battle. We know the challenge. And it's exhausting, isn't it? To battle against those sinful desires, to battle against Satan, to know that that battle of death is looming in the distance. And yet what Paul is calling us to do today is to set our sights like an athlete on the goal on that prize of eternal life in God's kingdom. So last two Sundays ago, I was in Indiana celebrating with our family, a little family event, my dad's partial retirement. And I was at home with some of my brothers, and on Saturday I went out to, uh, I went through there some boxes that they had in storage, and I was looking specifically for some toys that my brothers and I had that we played with since we had my family and, and cousins in, in, the, in the house, and giving them something to do. And as I was going through a couple of boxes looking for, for these old toys, I found a box of trophies and plaques and ribbons, and I opened it up. And since there's five children in my family, I noticed immediately that these weren't mine. These were my younger brother Michael's. And so I thought it'd be fun to break those out, set them on the kitchen table, and reminisce a little bit. And boy, did we ever. Like that second place ribbon he won in swimming in fourth grade, when, only, when there are only two swimmers competing. <laughs> You're really good at that one, Mike. <laughs> 
or that little soccer trophy that no kidding maybe stood about three inches tall with that little little guy ready to kick the soccer ball in a little little marble foundation the only year he played soccer in second or third grade and you know what he does now he coaches soccer at a place in indianapolis i'm gonna take this he says and put it on my desk because this is where it all started <laughs> and really that trophy and those ribbons, those plaques have no value at all. And yet, just as we see athletes competing for those sort of things, Paul says, your reward is much greater. Your prize is a prize that will not perish, fade, or lose value. And that reward is yours. Not because of your efforts. Not because of your training or your lack of training. But because of Jesus who faced your enemies for you. He's the one that was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Those pangs of hunger when he wanted to eat during his time of fast, he didn't give in. Those times when he could have power and authority, he didn't give in to the temptations of sin or Satan. As we hear in John chapter 13, verse 27, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he's there with his disciples in the upper room. He dips the bread into that bowl and he gives it to Judas and at that moment chapter John chapter 13 verse 20 says Satan entered Judas and Jesus says go and do what you need to do quickly and Jesus battle wasn't just against the sin of our lives in this world it was against the spiritual world of Satan and his demons and he even faced death itself and sin, death, it did its worst to Jesus with the floggings and the mocking and the crucifixion. And it appeared like sin and Satan and death had won. And maybe that's how you feel. Maybe there are days in our lives that it feels like sin has won again and Satan has got me again. And when death comes, I don't know what that will be like and it's frightening. Friends in Christ, Jesus is the one who's run the race for you. He is the one who has defeated sin and Satan and death and has risen victorious that you too may rise victorious over all those things that compete against you and tempt you and cause you to fear and question. Those things that wear you out. Jesus has defeated them. And Jesus promises that there will be a day where you will no longer have to compete. And there will be a day when you will no longer grow weary or tired or exhausted. It's the day when he returns. Or the day when he calls you home for eternity and crowns you with that crown of life. A day that's, that's described in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. When he says in verse 29, 28, he says, He, God, does not faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall fall, faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. It's talking about our battle here and now. Then he says in verse 31, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It is God who strengthens you and promises you that there will be a day where you will not grow weary or faint or grow tired because the battle will be over. Because of Jesus. And we look forward to that day, don't we? We look forward to the day where we will have that prize, that crown of life in God's kingdom for eternity. And until that day, we continue to compete against sin, against Satan, we even know that we will one day compete against death unless Jesus returns first. So how do we compete? Like an athlete who's in training for a race. So we also dive into God's word and we study that word that it may strengthen our faith so that that word may be shared with others. You see, that's what Paul's talking about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He begins in verse 16 by saying, For if I preach the gospel that gives me no ground for boasting, he's not talking about himself. No, this whole portion of Scripture is talking about God's children being faithful, not only in following Jesus for themselves, but in preaching the word in competing against sin and Satan and death itself and sharing that word with others. That's what Paul's talking about when he says he's become all things for all people. Part of the competition, part of the battle we face as Christians are the people we meet. And when we meet somebody who needs to hear God's word, it's kind of like an opponent on a schedule. It's kind of like game day. What word are you going to share with them? How can you build them up with words of Scripture? By becoming all things to all people. What does that mean? To use words today? Meet them where they are. That's what Paul's talking about. To the Jews, he became like a Jew. He met them like a Jew. To those under the law, he became as one under the law. To the weak, he became at one as weak. And we have people in our lives who may be at different stages, different struggles, different understandings of Scripture. And when we meet those people, Paul encourages us to preach the word, to meet them where they are, and to share a word of life about Jesus, a word of life that Paul says isn't just for me to preach, but to live out, lest I myself should be disqualified. May God, the Holy Spirit, empower you to go into training like an athlete, to be diligent, and disciplined in studying God's Word. May God, the Holy Spirit, empower you to face the struggles against sin and Satan faithfully, boldly, knowing that when we fail in those battles, we have forgiveness in Christ. May God, the Holy Spirit, give you those words to speak to the people in your lives that you may preach and share God's word, that they too may receive the prize, that crown of life in God's kingdom that will not perish, a prize that belongs to you because of Jesus. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith into life everlasting. Amen.